Today I'm going to show you how to convert your single zone frozen to a multi zone. The first step is to turn the power off. The next step is to remove the top four trays. To remove a tray, you need to disconnect the tray harness, remove harness sleeve from retaining mount. To unplug connector, push in on tab and pull the connector to the rear of the machine. To remove a tray, you'll need to lift the tray rail tabs up. These keep the tray from falling out of the rails when the machine is being field, filled. The next step is to install the turning vane in the hole, the air holes. This would be included in the kit that I assume you already have. If you didn't order the kit and need a kit, the number will be provided on the screen. The part number will be provided on the screen. When installing this vane, be sure to slide it up and keep it tight against the top of this opening. The next step is to remove the turning vane from the top of the machine and we're going to relocate it down to this set of holes here. Take another turning vane provided in the kit, invert it, and put it in the top set of holes like this. Now we want a gap because the insulated barrier is going to go in there, so I'll just put one hole in there for now and move it up high, and then I'll put the remainder screws in after we get the barrier in. The next step would be to install your temperature sensor. When this was a all single zone frozen machine, this temperature sensor, temperature sensor 3, controlled the refrigeration. Now that it's a multi-zone, this temperature sensor, which is temperature sensor 1, will control the refrigeration in the lower half of the machine. If you don't already have one in the machine, then you'll need to install it. It's included in the kit. You'll screw it in as this one is, and it will plug into a connector marked L for lower and be sure to tuck that harness out of the way 
so it doesn't get caught in a tray. The next step would be install the upper zone blower, which would be included in the kit. Sometimes these parts are separate and you may have to screw the fan mounting bracket to the fan itself. So put these four screws in and it blows the air out the bottom. So it should look like this when you have it installed or mounted to the bracket. There's three holes to screw to the top of the cabinet and there's already holes located in the cabinet for these. Next step is to connect the harness to your fan. The harness should be tucked in the back corner here, two pin connector and a ground ring terminal. Connect the two pin connector into the socket. Get a screw and a star washer that should be provided in your kit. Thread the screw through the ring terminal and put the star washer on the side going against the fan housing. Screw in. In preparation for installing the insulated barrier, we need to seal the bottom turning vanes with permagum installed with permagum that is provided in your installation kit. We will install the permagum this side corner of the turning vane and then the opposite. Take a good sized portion of the permagum and mold it in. On both sides. Work it in good and tight so it won't fall out. Next step is to install the barrier. Slide it along the center here and get the back in between the two turning vanes. Put two screws on the front tab. the shorter screws on this side or the rail mounting bracket will come away from the side of the cabinet. You can use the longer one on this side, it's okay. push the barrier up tight against the bottom rail or the third rail we want it up tight against here. Now we can plug in the oil heater. There's a connector tucked in the corner there. I'm going to need a screwdriver to get it out. Now that I've got the connector out of the channel, we'll connect it to the fan and heater. And tuck the oil heater wires underneath of the upper turning vane. Loosen the screw, push the turning vane down against the barrier. two remaining screws. Now 
now fill the corners of this turning vein with permagum provided and move the harness out of the way. Get a good size piece of permagum and mold it into the corner like we did below. And you can use some permagum to out of the way as well, back in this corner. Might need to hold the barrier from below while you work it in. And we'll do the opposite corner. The next step is to check your, your tray number four and be sure that the air is installed underneath. If not, it will be included in your kit and it simply screws on to the already provided uh, mounting bracket. It's already welded under the tray. And so it looks like this. Now we'll reinstall the four trays that we removed earlier. Start with the fourth tray that we put that air curtain on the bottom. The trays and wheels in the slots. Connect your tray harness and put the sheathing in the Drain relief on the side to keep it out of the way. And be sure to pull down your wheel ramps so the tray doesn't fall out. On the third tray, there's a uh, decal and a mounting bracket that goes on. And this actually serves a purpose for the function of the machine. The blower moves the air down the back and comes under this tray. And this seals up against the barrier we installed to keep the air from coming out and hitting the glass. So I'll screw that onto the bottom of the front part of the tray. business. Next, the next step here would be to replace the door decals. The current ones would say uh, single zone frozen or all frozen. You can get the multi temp decals by ordering the part number shown on the screen. They should be included in the kit that you use to create do this conversion. So you just stick them over the existing ones would be the best. Next step would be to turn the power on and reconfigure the machine for multi-zone 
minus 2. Now I'll show you how to convert your or reconfigure your machine to a multi-zone. Go into service mode. On this version you can do it just by the door switch. If you don't have this version you hit the service mode button on the control board. Hit 4, 0, ask for password which is standard passwords 2314. Hit 7. It'll say 7 for edit. So we keep hitting 7 until we get to multi-zone. Multi-zone. We typically set it on multi-zone frozen minus 2. That's a minus 12 set point. There's one that has no number. That's a minus 10 set point. And one with a minus 5, which is a minus 15 set point. Hit pound to save that. Asterisk to back out. And check your temperature sensors are all reading. We have T1, T2, and T3. They all are reading values, so we're in good shape.